Hey everybody! Today's project is a super fun, and I've said it before, but this is actually perfect for beginner. Oh! Oh! bounce from one hand to the other three times. All right, uh, super fun for beginners. It's just knife and a V-tool. I got uh, what, like a 55 or 40 degree V-tool, about a quarter of an inch, a uh, straight blade knife. We'll get into that in more detail. But yeah, easy enough. And look how cute she turned out. This would make for a great Christmas ornament. This would also make for a good little Christmas tree topper. You could scale her up and wrap a little wire, you know, stick a wire up underneath and then Wrap it around a cone, you could carve a cone and then set it on top of your Christmas tree. Or just, you know, like I said, an ornament. But this is super duper fun, guys. I hope that you uh, give it a shot. Is this focus even working? Yeah, there. Yeah, give her a shot. Okay, let's get into it. Work. Focus. There it is. <laughs> now, I mentioned not using the V-tool for this, uh, but, you know, the more I think about it, why not show you how to use the V-tool in case you're more confident with it uh, to separate the body from the wings. So if you want to clean something up, one thing that you can do is go along the edge of the separating side of the wing to the body and just go along like so, separating the, the wing from the body, just like that. And the head. All right, and then we can then come in with the knife as we see fit and reduce the wing, pushing it back. To get the body, that's the goal, is to get the body to stand away from the, the wings. Just like that. Okay. So I'm gonna keep taking this back and I can keep alternating between the V-tool and the knife. <laughs> Watch as I bump the camera. No, it's, it's definitely not a race. There's no reason to rush. Take your time and enjoy yourself. Just take your time and have fun. Enjoy the process. That's the most important thing here. Most important thing. And you got this. You know, part of the toughest thing of you know carving is just the bad thoughts that you have, like, oh, I'm no good at this. This isn't turning out. Carving is just a great exercise in developing good internal talk, too. The way that you think about yourself, you know, your creativity, all those things. And sometimes you need to quiet those voices in your head that say that you're doing it wrong or it's not going to turn out or it's taking too long. And just relax and enjoy the process. Now, as far as grain goes, if you notice that when the tool is moving through the wood one way, and it, it doesn't feel like it's cutting cleanly, just turn the blade around and go the opposite way. And if you notice it's better that way, carve it that way. In this case, I'm liking the way it's carving toward me better than away from me. All right, I'm getting pretty close to where I want to be there as far as getting that body away from the wings. bit at a time. And bouncing back and forth between that V-tool is fine too. Separating out that body. You know, I like it a lot more than I initially thought I was. I talked about how it was just going to use the knife, but it's actually pretty great to use that V-tool just to simplify things a little bit. All right, now I'm going to come in under the elbows. So as far as measurements go, let me grab my ruler here. It's hiding. Where is it hiding? Put your roller. There it is. Uh, whoa, man overboard. So as far as depth goes, I'm coming in about an inch from the top of the head. Maybe, uh, yeah, an inch and, a, and an eighth. And I'm going in with the V-tool. And I'm just going to cut in the bottoms of the elbows, just like so. All right, see that? Very cool. 
Very cool. I'm then going to carve the top of the elbows, or the arms rather. And then the separation of the hair. Here's what I found on the web. <laughs> I wasn't talking to you. Siri always thinks I'm talking to her. Or Google, whatever she is. So I'm just outlining the hair, like so. Alright. Having the hair go around, and you can have the hair carry over the side here as well, just like so. All right, and then the bottom of the head, which is just at the chin. So I'm coming down here, uh, let's see, I'm just going to guess that's a half an inch. Yep, it's about a half an inch. From the top of the head down is where that chin is going to be. And to indicate that, we're just going to carve a little scoop, a little curving scoop, just like that. Okay, and then I can continue that hairline cut all the way across. Okay, end up going to round the head over now. I don't want it to be so flat. Just like so. And I can tuck the shoulders underneath the hair. Just like that. Make a stop cut at the hair. So, beautiful. We're going to keep this fairly simple and clean up some of those knife edges in the corners here. Okay, great. Oh, guys, this is such a fun, simple carving. It does not, uh, it's not as difficult as it looks. Um, so I'm just taking the corners off of the wings. You know, really with this project, the hardest part is really just kind of separating the wings from the body. That, that's probably the most challenging part of this whole thing. So uh, once you've gotten that step done, you absolutely take your time on that. Uh, the rest of it's super cinchy and fun. You could also go ahead and make this a lot thinner. You don't have to make it at the full thickness of the uh, three-quarter inch that I'm doing here. You could even go half inch, and that would give you a little bit more of a shallow kind of um, relief type carving look. And that's cool too, because remember, this is this is just a super simple little whittle. It doesn't have to be uh, have a lot of depth or be very complicated or even viewed from very many angles. If it's an ornament, you can hang it on your Christmas tree. That's kind of what I'm going to do with this. And uh, you don't have to see it from multiple angles, really, if you have it nestled in, the, in a branch in the tree. All right, so I'm just kind of bringing this back a little bit more, tapering the wings back as we progress. And now I'm going to take the body back underneath the elbow. So everything beneath this initial cut that we made here, I'm going to round the body out and then meet it at that point right there. And I can also start to define the elbows as they come around with a little bit of a stop cut. I could use the V cut here, but since I've got the knife, a little bit of a stop cut coming in at an angle. Notice the angle. And then relief. Just like that. So I'll repeat that until it comes out cleanly. I might need to come under here as well. Yep, I will. Just like that. See how we've got the elbow protruding now? All right, so the same thing over here, just separating that. The stop cut, which is this initial cut, this severs the fibers of the wood, tells the fibers to stop tearing or to stop moving. And then we come under with, the, with it flat against the wing, like so. Boop. Again, we've got our stop cut. We've got this cut along the wing, parallel to the wing, boom. And then we've got the final cut, which is going straight in to excavate that material. And the chip should come out just like so. And we've got the elbows showing here. 
let me take this black off. I can see that it's kind of distracting in the camera. Take off my pencil or pen marks. Now I can really see what's going on a lot easier. Beautiful. There we go. I'm going to take it off of the hands as well just to make things easier. Or I guess really the arms. There's not a whole lot of detail as far as arms or go on this, or sorry, hands uh, go on this project. This is just a super simple project. Nothing too crazy complicated about it, which is just what we want, right? I mean, who wants to sit there for, for hours and days whittling out some crazy complicated ornament for your family to pull out once a year? Maybe you do, and that's fine if you do. Enjoy it. All right. So I'm just simplifying the area between the arms and the neck. All right, beautiful. I'm just going back over the hairline, separating the hairline from the head, just like that. And let's do a little hairline separation. So I'm going straight in at the hairline right here. And I'm coming in with a V-cut. That means I'm coming in at an angle like so. Notice the angle of the blade. And then another angle the opposite direction to meet it. Just like that. And then I can continue that down the head. Just like so. Just like that. It creates a little groove. That the hairline goes along. And I create a little bit more separation from the wing and the head, just to make that head pop a little bit more. Beauteous. I'm going to take the arms down beneath the head here. So I'll just make a stop cut underneath the chin, a cut along the hairline, and finally one relief cut along the neck or the chest, just like so. All right, and that's going to make that head pop out. Give us her cute little chin, and we're just going to leave her face rounded over, super simplified, nothing complicated about her face at all. We don't want to get caught up in the weeds with that. Although we could, we could make her face a lot more complicated and give her a little nose and little mouth. It's just so tiny, though. There's no reason to get crazy with it. All right, so I've got the stop cut along the elbows. Reiterating that, and again, V cut, V cut, just like that, and then round the body, round the body, get rid of these nasty pen marks. Well, I guess they're not nasty, sorry, sorry, pen marks, they might be sensitive. All right, so just a quick word on the design. I took the body and I swayed it over to one side because I just think that makes for a more interesting design. The more positive and the negative shapes working in unison create a really uh, fun and kind of interesting flow to the piece. A little bit of what we would call movement, which is good. It's always good in a carving for it not to be too static or too stiff. Especially when something is made out of a hard material like wood, if you can create the illusion of softness, you've really done a lot. All right, so I'm coming in and I'm rounding the body. Just like that. And getting rid of any saw marks. That's really what I'm doing right now. I don't want there to be any chatter marks from the saw blade. So I'm just taking those out. Removing a ton of material, but again, just kind of getting rid of all these kind of grody lines that are showing up on the project from that saw that we used. And if you didn't use the saw, you don't have to worry about that much. Yep. 
You know, the fun thing about doing an ornament like this is Christmas ornaments are something that are often passed down from generation to generation. So you could have this Christmas ornament, you could pass it down to your kids who might pass it down if you did a decent job to your grandkids. <laughs> or he, hey, even if you didn't do a, a decent job, maybe that adds to the family lore of the whole thing, you know? Grandpa's ugly... Uh, angel or grandma's ugly angel carving. We, we have to keep that in the family because uh, it's just too hilarious not to hang up every year on the tree or put on the mantle. You could really easily just set this on a mantle as well. It's just tiny, tiny enough to where it could also kind of be a fun thing for a kid to play with, almost like a toy. Why not? Okay little stop cut along the side for the uh, hair so that the hair comes around just like so. I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay. Just like that. Again, we've got a lot of these stop and relief cuts that are happening here. That's what's allowing us to make all of these nice, neat little forms. Excuse me. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my pencil just to make sure you guys can see exactly where I'm focused right now. I want to take a cut and separate the hands just like so. I just create a little ball in the center and then also a little line to indicate the, the arms ending meeting the body and the shoulder. So just a little bit of a, an indication of that. And for that, I'll use the V-tool. Dropping stuff like crazy today. Okay, just like that. Okay, so I'm coming along. Separating the arm from the body. And just a little V cut is all I'm doing here. A little V, and then next to that is another little V. Really? <laughs> I guess it's a W. It's a W. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Round off the edges of that W. Oh, it looks like you got a little tiny chip coming out of there. But you know what? I kind of like that. It makes the hands look like they come out ahead of the arm. So let's do that. I'm going to create a V cut at the sleeve, just like that. Boop, boop. So one angle here, and then turning the blade over, and then meeting that angle. Okay, and the same thing here. Boom, boom. And that almost makes her look like her hands stand out above her elbows, which I, which I actually kind of like. See? It's what we call, what, at least what Bob Ross calls a happy accident. He might have been onto something there. Okay. I'm going to create a little bit of that V, the V of the elbow here. And I think it's possible that our knife needs a little bit of cleaning up, a little bit of polishing on the edge because it seems to be a little messy, a little bit messier than it normally is, but then I'll have to stop the video and bring it to the polisher and all that stuff. So I'll try to do the best that I can with what I've got, but keep in mind that if you're noticing that it's not as much fun as it should be, it's, like I said before, probably an issue of the tool not being sharp enough. Okay, guys, it's coming along. She's getting pretty. Okay, we're really close. We don't have a lot more to do. Of course, you could take this a lot further than I have. You could go ahead and detail the grooves in her shirt. You can, again, really clean up her face a whole bunch, and you can seal her up and, and do all kinds of interesting things with paint. I'm really going to keep her simple. I'm not going to add paint to her because, you know, I mean, you could do a tiny wash of white, but I actually kind of like the purity of the white. It's very angelic to me, the wood tone just on its own. And so I can get away with not doing that. But I do not want to get away with leaving all of these saw marks on the edges. So I'm going to continue to uh, trim those.
cleaning up around the body. Making sure there aren't any fuzzes. And as far as finish on this, I like to use a poly, it's called a polycrylic, it's by Minwax. The main reason I like using it is it's just, a, it's just so easy. You can pop this sucker outside or on a piece of cardboard or any newspaper and just lightly spritz it and let it dry. You can coat it again, but that's just going to protect it from the environment, from humidity changes, especially if your kids are playing with this thing. You don't want their grubby little fingers you know, getting it dirty, and then, of course, it can't really get clean if the wood finish isn't present. So, yeah, it's nice to wood finish this, and especially if you're thinking of painting it, you definitely need to have a wood finish. That's going to prevent the colors from seeping into one another, and it's just going to make for a much, much better uh, carving. All right, so finally, I want to separate the wings from the body by coming along the back side with a stop cut right along the, the edges of the wings, the tip of the wing, just like so. Was I out of the frame there? Hopefully you could see that. Okay, so I'm just transitioning the wing from the body, just like so. All right, and try to match these if you can from one side to the other. I kind of lost my match there. I had to bring it down a little bit, that's okay. Cool, nice. All right. The idea is to make the wings look like they're behind the body. And so I'll tuck those back behind there and round the body from the back side so that it kind of looks as though it turns and the, w the wings are behind the position of the body. Just like that. Pushing those wings back, making that deep groove there. Oh, you got, are you getting dizzy yet from all the turning? Okay, so I'm going to take the body, like I said, and just round it back, especially underneath these wings. We can leave the wings pretty far forward. And if you want to leave this thing freestanding, don't take too much material away from the bottom. Try and leave it intact. If it's an ornament, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. Okay, now it's time to take the V-tool and come along the backside of the wings and connect them. Just like so. Okay, see that? Yeah, and guys, if you want to go crazy with this, you can add detail to the wings. You can go ahead with the V tool. You can Google uh, angel wing and then come up with all kinds of really neat uh, details to add to the wings. And that would add a lot to this carving. It would just make it really pop and make it beautiful to look at. But I don't really, um, care to do that. I like the simplicity of the flat plane cuts. And I just want to keep this project as simple as possible for those of you who don't want to uh, fuss with all those things. So that being said, I'm just going to keep rounding the wings over. I don't want it to be uh, too flat at any angle because really the wings are kind of a, a natural thing. And, and in many in many instances, when you see a uh, uh, you know, anything in biology, it's it's most likely not going to be totally flat. There's a lot of round turns on the on the body and on the wings, and that sort of thing. So taking those round, those uh, hard corners off and rounding them is wise. Okay, so I'm just tapering them. It's okay if the wings are a little thicker on the top and they kind of thin out as they move to the bottom of the body. That's okay by me. All right, I'm going to take the saw marks off the back as well. Take the hard edges off as well. Any of the rough corners. And I can kind of separate out the head a little like that as well. And you know, you can take a sander to the back of this if you don't want to use the knife just to smooth it out a little. <laughs> you can leave it rough too if you really are stubborn and don't want to do any more carving than you have to. But I like to clean it up by knife. I love the look of a knife finish. You know, it's hard to beat a knife finish. You really um, would have trouble sanding 
to the same smoothness of a knife blade's finish of the on the wood. So, you know, sanding is an option here and would be really good if you did the details on the face, all of that, but as far as I'm concerned, as long as your cuts are clean, you don't need to use sandpaper. But sometimes it, it takes a while to learn that. For most people, it takes a while to learn how to use the tool and not worry about uh, sandpaper because those cuts, they often are not so clean when you're not as precise with the stop and relief. And so don't worry if you have to clean up the fuzzies. Sometimes a brush is handy, a toothbrush or a dental brush will clean up the old, uh, or a denture brush, I'm sorry. We'll clean up the fuzzies out of the corners like this. But you know, if you have too many fuzzies, it probably means that your cuts aren't quite clean enough and you just have to go back over them like so. All right, guys, this is a super cute and, and fun little project. You know, I could fiddle with her for hours and hours and just uh, make her cuter, but I'm really happy with the simplicity of her. And I think with just a little bit of clear coat and uh, even a little bit of paint if you wanted to, she could be just absolutely uh, popping from that Christmas tree's background. But as far as I'm concerned, I like the wood grain as I said before. I might just leave her this way. I think I'm going to leave her this way. Who knows, I might change my mind later. But It's totally up to you. If you were going to paint her, I would just do a really light wash of white on her wings. You could also do a light wash of uh, white on her uh, dress as well. If you wanted to kind of indicate that by coming under here separating that out a little bit more. You could do that as well. I'm trying to uh, keep it as straightforward as possible, so I'm not going to worry about that. You don't have to either. Okay, just cleaning up. A little more separation from the body. Final touches. All right. You could take a light bit of sandpaper and touch her up if you need to. I think she's in great shape though as it is. Doesn't need a whole lot more. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And uh, here, here she is. Let me take a little bit more out of this chin area around her face a little bit more. Just a little note about women's faces. They tend to be rounder than males. So, you know, just by keeping it nice and short, right? A male's face is gonna be a lot longer. It's going to be uh, less round, generally speaking. Uh, you know, these are the stereotypes surrounding male and female faces. Of course, they're not always the case, but if you keep that head nice and short, it's really gonna make her more feminine looking and give her the, uh, the right features. Uh, so anyway, that being said, Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed. You can see I cleaned it up. I went back over the whole thing with a knife and did a little bit of extra separation of the wings and the body. Uh, turned the hair around here and excavated a little bit underneath the neck. And so, yeah, as I said, this is Mahoney's finish. I found that this is really good as a, as far as oil-based finishes go, or waxes rather, because it tends to harden and it provides a really durable uh, finish. So I've got some paper towel here. I'm gonna dab off the excess using the paper towel. But I'm actually gonna brush it on just because uh, it's a little easier to control with the brush than it is with the rag being that there are all these little crooks and crannies. So, you know, the linseed oil also tends to harden, which is good. I don't like to use fin oil finishes or really any finishes that don't harden because they tend to collect dust. I'm really liking that warmth. You can see I also came around and extended a couple of V grooves on the back side of her uh, head there. All right, so I'm just rubbing it in. With the Mahoney's oil, you're supposed to kind of buff it in. 
and you might use a rag for this as well just easier to push it into the corners and crooks and crannies using the brush okay and I'm just gonna use oh, I'm gonna use my paper towel here dab it off like this and I believe the instructions say to allow it to dry for a little bit. Let's see, direction, rub on liberally with a soft cloth. Let's sit for one hour. Yeah, so I'm kind of breaking the rules here, guys, just to give you a sense of what it'll look like when it's finished, but I'm going to take off the excess right now. Look at that nice warm tone. Anyway, so this will sit neatly on a desktop or a tabletop. This would be great for a mantle at Christmas time, but... You know, I think a really great option for this, and the way that I plan on using it is to uh, put it up on our Christmas tree. So you can literally hang this. You could make a larger version of this as well as a Christmas tree topper. Just hollow out the bottom. Uh, or you can attach a wire, and uh, you would wrap it around a cone shape. That way you could sit it right on the top of a tree. Put your little angel on your tree. Lots of things you can do with this. Uh, you could even kind of give it to your kids, as I mentioned before, as like a toy. But... Very, very cute, and I like the way this turned out. I hope that you guys enjoy and that you give this one a shot. And, uh, by the way, if you want to learn how to carve faces, as I mentioned before, the link will be in the description below. That's my online school. All right, bye.